Right, good morning everyone. Can you hear me? Are you sure? At the front? Good. Can you hear me at the back? Welcome to those who are still coming in. So it's fantastic to see you this morning. Thank you very much for, um, for joining us. I guess the first thing to say, of course, is look, a very warm welcome to Birmingham. Congratulations. You've made it through the summer of uh, exams and results and the anticipation of university, and of course, finally, you are here. Now, of course, it takes a few days to settle down, so you'll still be unpacking boxes and trying to work out where you live. Occasionally, you'll remember which room to go back to. Occasionally, you won't, but uh, it takes time to settle in. So, you know, join us, come to these things, meet your tutor, meet people on your course, and gently settle into university life. Of course, those of you who are postgraduates have probably experienced this before, but a lot of you will still be in a new place, a new city, uh, and for many of you, a new country too. So of course, it will take time to settle too. But um, look, I hope this morning's session will be very useful for you. It'll just be about an hour, and we've got a mix of activities. My name is Stephen Jarvis, so I'm the head of the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences, and I'll tell you more about that uh, as we go through uh, this morning. Now, the second slide here is uh, a link to something called Slido, and there's also a QR code too. So if you've got a QR reader on your phone, you might want to connect using this. If you haven't, go to the Slido website and type in this code here. And midway through this morning's session, we're going to run a Q&A session. We've got some, uh, some people here who are very experienced with Birmingham and life at Birmingham. And we'll sit at the front here uh, on these chairs and we'll take questions. And you can post your questions through that uh, Slido link there. Uh, it's all anonymized. So, you know, if you have a question and you think, well, this is a really uh, 
a, a question which I'm embarrassed to ask. Don't worry about it, because we won't say that you know, it was your question or your question. You can post whatever you want, however simple or complex those questions may be. So we'll just leave that up there for another minute or so as you get connected. Uh, on my left here, we've got Deborah Longworth, who's our Pro Vice Chancellor for Education uh, in the university, and also Celia uh, Greenway, who's Director of Student Engagement. And they'll come and talk to you first about student matters, and then we'll get back to college activities uh, after that. So, Deborah, perhaps I can welcome you to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, and good morning, everyone, and to those of you who I believe are probably following online as well, very warm welcome to you. Um, as Stephen said, I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor for, for Education, and one of the real pleasures of, of my job is being able to, to welcome you formally in your first week um, to the university. As a professor of English literature, I think we can say it's fairly certain that I won't ever be actually teaching any of you over the three or four years that, that, that you're with us. Um, but I do hope to see many of you around campus at events um, or in possibly some of our student engagement focus groups that I'm regularly involved in with students, but at some point at least before conferring your degree um, at the end of your time with us. I was very privileged on Monday to represent the university at the funeral of the Queen. And while I was there, and we had a good three and a half hours in our seats to wait before everything started, I was thinking about what I wanted to, to say to you this morning as part of this welcome. And what struck me on Monday, you know, in the lead up to the event, was the community that was developing, developing amongst all of the strangers descending on London um, for that, uh, that day. You will make many good friends during your, your time with us, but this week, everything is probably very new. You're meeting people for the first time. What I experienced on Monday was people coming together from all over the country, from all over the world, from different backgrounds, different walks of life, different cultures. And everyone had one thing in common, which was that we didn't really know what we were supposed to do. No one had experienced a funeral of the Queen before. We had our instructions, we had our timetable, we knew where we were meant to be. But we didn't really know how to behave or to how to speak with each other. Um, and that was the same for everyone. This was a new experience for everyone, whether it was the police, the servicemen, those of us in the nave, um, the president um, of, of, uh, of, of the United States. All of us had to sort of try and work out what it was um, that we did. And what we did was actually smile and say hello to each other. And the queue to get in was lined with probably every five steps or so uh, a, a member of the police and they would all smile and say hello or good morning and we would smile and say hello or good morning back and eventually one of them just said I'm not sure what else to say or do I'm not sure if I should say good morning but but anyway um, and very quickly through that we became a community a community of, of strangers but nevertheless with a bond and able to to talk to each other um, and spend those those few hours together I'll never see those people again, probably, but if I did, I think we would be able to, to you know, spring into conversation, to remember that time that we spent together. Our community includes students and staff from all over the world, from different cultures and backgrounds. For all of you, as, as first years, new to the university, university is a new experience, none of you have done it before. And I suppose my first piece of advice to you, and that I wanted to, to to give you this week is to smile and say hello to the person next to you, to the people in the queue for coffee, to the people in the library, um, or just passing you on campus. And to say to you to smile and say hello back to those who reach out to you, otherwise we'll all look a bit crazy. Um, it's that kindness, it's that basic human connection that builds a community out of strangers and for which you will develop both long-standing, deep friendships, but also a broader bond across and with all of those who work and study here. So that's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice, 
is to make the most of everything that university has to offer you. It's our job as, as academics, as teachers, you know, all the many uh, colleagues who, who work with us to support you during your time here. It's our job to support you to develop academically, personally, and professionally. But that development is about so much more than just studying for your program and the assessments and the grades that you get at the end. You will enjoy a really rich and rewarding education with us. Engage fully with all that your tutors are teaching you and all the varied learning opportunities that are available to you um, through your programs, but also through wider university projects of various kinds. But also, and you know, this is the, the, the real key, I think, make sure you take the time to join clubs and societies, to volunteer for student representative or ambassador roles, to take, play, take part in um, the sort of opportunities we have for service in the community, to be involved in focus groups, um, to take part in events. All of these things contribute to your development. All of those things are key important features to have on your CV. They help to form the rounded students that our employers tell us they really want to see applying to them after university. So smile and say hello, take every opportunity to get involved. Otherwise, have a wonderful week and a very warm welcome. Thank you very much, Deborah. Celia, go on, I just wanted to come and uh, introduce you, but you're next, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Celia Greenway and I feel very lucky to be able to speak to you this morning. Really, I want to welcome you to the university on behalf of all of us on the stage, but on behalf of your college and behalf of all of the personal tutors that I work with across the university. So on arrival to the university, you will be assigned a personal tutor and they will help you with your academic progress throughout your time here at Birmingham. At Birmingham, we want you to do your best. We want you to be happy and to be thriving in our environment. So actually, we consider having a personal academic tutor to be really important. So one of the things that I would urge you to do this week is when you have the opportunity to meet your tutor and to have a meeting with them in a few weeks' time, go along to that meeting and chat about your progress and chat about the things that may be concerning you or the things that you think, actually, that's going well. I want to share it with somebody. So we have a very joined up approach to support here and we view the tutorial as a hub. So if you go to your tutor, your tutor will be able to help you with your academic skills. If you've got some emotional and uh, uh, social needs, they will be able to direct you to well-being. And also, if you want to find out what to do in the future, thinking about your future career. I know this is only your first week, but as your time progresses, you'll be thinking about what do I do next? And that's how your tutor can help you. And there's more to life than your academic progress, as Deborah was saying. So this week, I would urge you, we've got Acacia coming uh, to talk next about the Guild. I would urge you to do join a club and a society. My daughter was a student here herself. And to my surprise, she joined the St. John's Ambulance. And I was thinking she'd never shown any interest in a career in healthcare, or indeed shown any inclination for first aid. But she said to me, it's a good way of getting into gigs, mum. And I hadn't realized that. But actually, from that, she then went on to form a different career. She started here doing philosophy, and she's now an occupational therapist. So actually, that joining something else was her way and her route to her eventual career. And one of the things that she found useful was indeed the personal tutorial. So as Deborah said, you're joining a community of learners. Now actually, I'm talking about support and development to you. And one of the things I would say is you're looking around the room. All of you are new. All of you are at the same level. All of you will have the same questions today. And actually, that shared experience is a big bond that will carry you through. 
Now, I've just had a conversation that, that I'm not alone in this. I actually met my husband in my first few weeks at university. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we're a marriage bureau, but what I am saying is that you can make connections over the next few weeks that will stay with you for the rest of your lives. So actually, I also met my closest friend on my very first day at university, who I'm still friends with today. He's the godfather to my child, and my child is the bridesmaid at his child's wedding. So these connections, these people in the room with you, they actually will become very familiar. And if you're stuck on an assignment, talk to them. They'll actually be as stuck as you. Or if not, they'll be able to help you. So there's a reassurance in the, in the as, as Deborah said, the strangeness, yet the familiarity. Some of you may not be new to Birmingham, so share that knowledge with the others in the room that are complete strangers. So what we actually want you to do, so this is your very first day, or first week rather, and so this is, I'm channeling the marriage thing now and saying to you, this is the first week of the rest of your lives. Because actually we're thinking now, even from the moment that you start to when you leave us. So we want you to develop those skills to take you beyond the university. So think about those extra things you can do outside of your course. Join a group or society. I went along to the society's fair yesterday and I'm now going to take up powerlifting. So on that note, I'm going to hand you over to Acacia and she's going to talk to you about the activities that the Guild offers. Hi, um, I'm Acacia and I am your Guild President this year, so welcome. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do at the Guild. Um, so your Guild is made up of seven elected full-time officers and we basically get paid for the next year to make sure that you have the best time at university. If you're not, let us know so we can fix it and make your experience a lot better. Um, we're elected, so we're here to serve you, make sure you have the best time. Um, you have a president, which is me, um, an activities and employability officer, your education officer, a postgrad officer, international officer, welfare community and sport. And you also have seven part-time officers who volunteer, and they are for BAME, disabilities, LGBTQ+, trans and non-binary, women's, ethical and environmental and campaigns. So you've got a broad variety of officers who are here to help you if you've got any issues, any big ideas, and make sure you have a great time. So what is the Guild of Students? I didn't know when I joined, I just thought it was a building on campus, not sure what it did. Um, but we're basically everything bar teaching. Um, we have reps that we coordinate and they'll be on your course. You can sign up to be one if you'd like. Um, and they give feedback, help you have the best time on your course. If there are any issues, they raise them. Um, and they represent your academic interests, which is really important when you're at university. You can also join societies, which Deborah and Celia have mentioned. We have societies ranging from battle reenactment to pasta society to politics society. Um, there's a whole range, and I really encourage you to come along to our activities fair today, have a look at what's going on, and sign up to a couple. It's a really great way to meet people that are on your course or potentially that you wouldn't have already ordinarily met. Um, you can learn new skills, meet new people, and just it's a great way to kind of get involved. We also have clubs, um, club nights in the evening, as well as a bar which is open from midday. Um, again, a really great social space if you wanted it, as well as a study space too. So, it's welcome week if you didn't already know. Um, I'm definitely feeling it, it's definitely Thursday. Um, and we have loads of welcome events and have had loads so far. Today we have our activities and societies fair, so come down, it opens at 11 and it's open until 4. And we also have a give it a go fair tomorrow from 11 till 4, um, which is a great way to get involved as well. And, have a, and see what you might be signing up to. Um, we also have some club nights this week, so we have a silent disco this evening, which will be really good fun, um, and we also have some other themed nights, but you can find them on the Guild website. 
Um, and there's also the Welcome Back Marquee, which is on campus, so go and have a look at that, and that's run by the university too. Um, but yeah, loads of different stuff going on, and I really recommend getting involved. And you can find it on the Guild of Students website. Um, if you have any questions throughout your time at university, like these are some emails that you can take a photo of, get in contact, whether it's about accommodation, whether it's about just general advice on housing or your course or just general inquiries about the university, we can help. Um, and there's also an officer hub where you can get in touch with one of the seven or seven full-time officers or seven part-time officers too to get in touch and ask any questions. But yeah, we're a students' union. We're run by you, for you. So get in touch if you've got any problems. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Keisha. Thank you. So do go along. Look, the unions, the, the guild is great. Uh, you can find nice food, good, you know, places to go for a drink, co fancy coffee, a pint of beer. It's just a good place to hang out and, uh, and meet uh, fellow, fellow students and uh, fellow course members. So thank you very much for your support. Now, look, let me go back to the college. So I said I was Stephen Jarvis, head of college. What's a, what's a college? So you'll know that the university, or perhaps you'll know, that the university is divided into five colleges. So ours is engineering and physical sciences. So you'll all belong to a school, and I'll talk about the schools uh, in a minute. And each school belongs to one of the colleges in the university. So we're a sort of collective, as it were. And of course, we're a collective of mathematics and computer science and engineering and chemical engineering and physics and, uh, and others. Throughout the year, you'll discover that there are these inter-college competitions which we fare very well at. Uh, mostly, we win perhaps everything, uh, un unless the uh, judging is biased, and then we might come in second, or indeed last, depending on what it is. But, uh, but look, what it is is a family, of course. We are a family of uh, like-minded subjects uh, under the umbrella of the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences. It's a good place to be, it's a lot of fun, and as, as, as I'll try and uh, persuade you in the slides to come, it is the place to be as well, because actually we do all of the great stuff that, uh, that people should be interested in in today's day and age. So look, chemical engineering. Do we have any chemical engineers in the house? That's not bad, is it? That's a pretty good, uh, good turnout. So look, why should you be interested in chemical engineering, even if you're not? So if you're sitting there as a physicist or a mathematician or computer scientist, you're thinking chemical engineering, what's all that about? Um, well, look, I mean, some of the great work that goes on in chemical engineering is, is around something called formulation engineering. So if you're working on designing products, let's say cleaning products that work at lower temperature, for example, in washing machines or dishwashers or other things, um, then formulation engineering is the place where that work is done. Why is it important? Because actually, if you want to wash your clothes at lower temperatures so that you save energy and it's kinder on the environment because of the chemicals that you're using, then that's why it's important. It's a multi-billion dollar a year industry. And our chemical engineering school are one of the best places to do formulation engineering in the world. The other thing they do is healthcare technologies. So actually, one of the things we managed to do in chemical engineering during COVID was develop a nasal spray um, that would prevent you, or at least make it more difficult to catch COVID uh, during the pandemic. And of course, we sell this now worldwide. We had to work very quickly uh, in chemical engineering to work, to trial this, to get it out, to make sure that we've got the right information to, uh, to supply to you know, uh, people who build the products. But now it's sold everywhere, uh, very popular in, uh, in India currently. Now, the other stuff they do in chemical engineering too is around energy. Uh, and of course, you know, we are in the midst, are we not, of this energy crisis that everyone talks about in the papers and on the news and, uh, and everywhere else. And our chemical engineering school, again, are the, one of the best places uh, in the world to study energy, energy storage, hydrogen, and, um, and all of those complex issues related to that, uh, that energy infrastructure. So if you sat next to someone who put their hand up, who admitted that they were a chemical engineer, now, actually, you know that they do something really quite useful. 
because the work they're doing is improving healthcare, is improving uh, energy and sustainability, and of course is thinking about the impact of chemicals uh, on the environment. So, well done, chemical engineering. Computer science, who's any computer scientists here? Few, and indeed me too, so I shall raise my hand there too. Look, you can't do anything these days, can you, without involving computer science in one way. Everyone is sitting here in the room with actually a rather sophisticated computer in their pocket that's busy doing stuff as you sit here, connecting, you know, thinking about what's going on, doing updates, all these other things. Our computer science school here is actually outstanding in a number of areas, uh, particularly in cybersecurity. Um, so those of you who are doing computer science will be immersed in this cyber world as you begin to uh, go through your subjects. But they do stuff for GCHQ and um, uh, around vehicles and vehicle security, work with Microsoft and IBM and Google and uh, BT and, uh, and others. So it really is a specialist center in the world uh, for cybersecurity. Of course, they do human-computer interaction. There's a lot of work on AI and machine learning and other things too. But indeed, why wouldn't you want to be a computer scientist in this day and age? Now, what other schools do we have under our college? Engineering, do we have any engineers in the house? Oh, that was a reluctant hand up in the air there, wasn't it? But look, you needn't be. There's some fantastic stuff going on in engineering, not least because you're in, I think, probably the best building on campus, are you not now? So if, if people don't know engineering, then talk to one of those people who put their hand up and come and see this fabulous new space that opened in January uh, to support our engineering teaching and research. Now, what do they do in engineering? Environmental engineering, fluid mechanics, structural engineering. It's one of the best places in the world to study transportation. This is a picture of a train here. This is the first hydrogen-powered train uh, on the UK mainline track. So again, if you're trying to think of uh, sustainability, fuel types, then engineering is the place where we do that. So, maths. I know there's one mathematician because I spoke to you earlier on. Are there any others? Yeah, a few hands go up there too. That's right. Right, good. Hands in the air. What do we do in mathematics? Well, we, of course, we do the foundational uh, maths, geometry, mathematical physics, topology, dynamical systems, and those kind of things too. But what else are we doing? We're working on things like fertility treatment um, and being able to mathematically model that to improve outcomes uh, with our local hospital, uh, of course. Uh, we look at structural mathematics, so we look at the integrity, for example, of ships and submarines uh, in our uh, mathematics research. And of course, again, during COVID, maths and mathematical modeling and epidemiology, of course, were some of the most important subjects. And we talked about R numbers and all these other things and compared uh, mathematical models around the country. We were all using maths to try and understand how the pandemic uh, would impact on us somehow. So again, you couldn't be in a better place, I think, if you're doing mathematics. Now, met and mat. Do we have any met and mat people here? Yes, one <laughs> over there. Well, let, let me tell you the importance of met and mat. It's right down the end of the green heart, and that's where the School of uh, Metallurgy and Material is. But Again, this is a fantastic, fantastic school uh, in the university. One of the things we do here is we do something called single crystal casting to be able to create the turbo fan blades for Rolls-Royce jet engines that appear, of course, in all commercial jet planes that, uh, that you fly. And you know that those blades, they operate at a melting point that's higher uh, than the material itself that they are made from. So how does that work? I mean, I'm a computer scientist, and even I find this is mind-boggling. But how can you possibly run an engine that would melt because, it's, of course, it's you know, running at a temperature that's higher than its melting point? But somehow, they manage to build these things, and, of course, we fly on them uh, on all the time. So we have this fantastic Met and Matt school. Now, finally, oh, no, not quite finally, physics. Any physicists? Good. Welcome, physics. <laughs> <laughs> nice, to, uh, nice to have you in the room. And again, what sort of stuff do we do in physics? 
Well, particle physics, nuclear physics, actually next week we have David Willits coming in to open our latest uh, neutron accelerator which is buried at the back of, uh, of uh, the physics school. So we do a lot of stuff in nuclear physics. We've been teaching and researching nuclear physics, of course, for, uh, for 50, 60, 70 years. This accelerator, of course, will allow us to look at um, cancer therapy, radiotherapy, um, and improving that for different types of cancer. It will allow us to build and test materials that will go on rovers that will then go off and you know, work their way around Mars or the moon or, uh, or other things. So there's some fantastic stuff going on in, uh, in nuclear physics. There are planets being discovered every week, I hear, from our physics uh, department. Every time I give an update on physics, then we talk about some new exoplanet that they've managed to discover uh, from our uh, group. We, we have the world's, some of the world's leading experts in gravitational waves uh, in, uh, in physics as well. And actually some of the most exciting stuff coming out recently is around quantum and quantum physics and quantum sensors where they tell me that they can look below the surface uh, of us and they can find, if you look just uh, at a shallow level, pipes, leakages, these kind of things, but of course they can keep going down and down and down to the Earth's core and be able to look at everything, everything uh, in the structure of the Earth below us. So physics, a very cool place to be. Right, finally chemistry, any chemists? I did meet some chemists. Look at that, what a contingency from uh, chemistry. Well look, welcome, and actually, what are we doing in chemistry? It's, uh, we're working really hard, and of course, as you'll see, or as you've perhaps been told, you will have a new building. So the new molecular sciences building should be ready uh, next autumn. So you'll have a year in Haworth, and then you'll start to transition over to your new uh, chemistry building in a year's time. And it's fabulous. You know, go and stand outside, and you can see this thing uh, appearing before your eyes. But again, you know, we've got a few areas of uh, strength on my board here. But um, looking at critical materials, recycling, batteries, um, supramolecular chemistry, green chemistry. We do a lot of work in plastics, of course. How can you create uh, the polymers uh, that we need for plastics that will biodegrade in the, uh, in the environment? And we have the Birmingham Plastics Networks, which, which is one of the best places uh, to look at polymer science uh, in the world. So whether you're doing drug discovery, uh, drug delivery, designing new polymers for uh, biorecyclable plastics, whether you're looking at the materials that will go in batteries, car batteries, batteries for phones, then again, chemistry is the place uh, where that work goes on. So you can see then that our College of Engineering and Physical Sciences does stuff. We take those world challenges and we try and find solutions to those. Many of you will work together, computer scientists working with chemists, physicists working with mathematicians, engineering uh, students working with uh, material science students. We have to work together to solve some of the most difficult problems that the world has uh, today. But this is the engine room, I think, of, uh, of doing stuff in Birmingham, and it is a fabulous, fabulous place to be. So you're all very welcome to this college. Now, just finally then, so just on that uh, message of being part of a team, Welcome to the team. So of course you are now team undergraduate in EPS, team postgraduate in EPS. And look, we're getting back to normal. Teaching is now face-to-face -face again, which is good. Labs are face-to-face, -face, so we've managed to shake off many of the difficulties of, uh, of COVID. Work together, work with staff. We're all trying to tackle these complex problems, but we can only do those together through projects, assignments, talking to each other, sitting in the common room, going and having a coffee together and thinking through these issues. So look, I hope that as you spend time here, you more and more feel part of the team, Team EPS. And as I say, you're extremely welcome uh, to this fantastic and fabulous and ambitious and creative college uh, as part of the University of Birmingham. So welcome, everyone. Now you know what the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences is. Now, I hope through that Slido link, you've managed to send some questions. I'm going to introduce uh, Andrew Quinn here, who's our Deputy Director of Education uh, in the college. Do you want to say anything, Andrew, or are you just, you're just going to go straight into it? And our panel members, maybe you could come on stage too now, if you would. 
and I'll introduce you as you come on. Uh, Molly, hand in the air. No, there we are. Jacob, hand in the air. Hurrah. Catherine, good. You and Molly, aren't you? <laughs> One of you had to be Molly. Um, Callista? <laughs> right, good. Welcome uh, on stage. Now, uh, looking at our technical team, this is a bit like Eurovision. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions from the audience that are coming on Slido? Andrew, would you yeah. like to take us gently through those questions? First of all, if I might, uh, can I get people to introduce themselves? Please do. So um, perhaps you'd like to just give a little bit of introduction to uh, what sort of student you've been over the last year and uh, where you come from and what sort of uh, affiliation that you have. So if I could start with you, Molly. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Molly. Um, I'm actually not a current student. I graduated last year, so I'm now an alumni, but I graduated from Nuclear Science and Materials, which is um, a course within the Metallurgies and Materials School. Um, so as a student, I got really involved with societies. I was chair of a society for a while. I was vice president of the Nuclear Society. Um, and since graduating, um, I've been working at the University in Student Experience for a year before starting a graduate scheme at KPMG in October. Thank you. Uh, I'm Calissa. Um, my life's slightly less exciting, but I've just finished my second year. I'm the volunteering officer for MAFSOC, and this year we're working on starting a tutoring scheme at a local school, so that's my focus for the year. So, yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm Jacob. I'm the president of the Computer Science Society and a final year computer science student. I think I, my favorite time at university has been getting involved in the societies. There's been so much. I think on, on Tuesday, we had 200 people in the computer science building and spent 600 pounds on pizza. It was really good. <laughs> That's great. That's a challenge. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I'm Catherine. Um, I'm actually a biochemist, and I've just come off a, um, a fourth year after my year in placement in industry. Um, I'm the Vice President of Women in Science and Engineering Society, which is an EPS society which um, is, aims to promote careers and community within the EPS and, sci and STEM community so we can all support each other. Um, and yeah, we're really looking forward to the year ahead, promoting some careers and also some more social events as well. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, and just so you know, my background is in engineering, so I'm, I'm an academic in the School of Engineering. So one of the questions that uh, a lot of the people here, um, don't forget to post your questions on the Slido board. Uh, one of the questions that's popping up quite a lot is if there are so many things going on, as well as having to do your work, how on earth do you balance everything? What's, uh, what, what's your thoughts, Bolly? Um, I mean, it's a big change coming to university from school, but you are an independent learner here. You've got to learn how to balance your time, and that's something that you figure out along the way. First year is very much the time to try and figure out how best you balance your time. Um, but it is really important to get involved with the extracurricular activities as well. That's just something that you've got to assess. No one's going to tell you that you're doing too many, too many extracurriculars. That's something that you've got to learn and figure out and pace yourself. Um, but you have got several years to get involved with as much as possible, so no need to do everything straight away. Any other thoughts about balancing things? Walking quickly is, is my top tip. You can get to lectures quickly, you can do much more. But also just trying everything out. You might as well give it a go. If you're not liking it or it's going to take up too much of your time, do something else. There's so much available. Okay. Yeah, I would say that um, organization and prioritizing is such an important thing to me. I know that um, I kind of have an order in my head of the things I need to do first, and then once I've got those done, then I can start to focus on some like extracurriculars and making sure you definitely take some time out to do the things you enjoy doing and spend time with your friends because that's just as important for your mental health as, it, as your studies are. So definitely prioritizing, but making sure you have some time to have some fun as well. So what, um, what would you say are the best ways to get involved with um, societies? Um, perhaps you... Well, the society fair is going on today. MAFSOC will be there. I don't know if everyone else in society is going to be there, but if you have any questions, particularly about societies, they'll definitely go to society's fair. Um, or even just their Instagrams and Facebooks. It's a pretty good way to get to know. <laughs> They're pretty active on there. And some of the societies are actually associated with schools, aren't they? 
like maths. The School of Maths, example. yeah. Uh, we worked with the School of Maths a lot. We, there's mathematical musing events, which are kind of like coffee mornings, and the lecturers get involved in a lot of our events too. Like, and the maths op ball lecturers often come to that. <laughs> and is that similar in computer science, for example? Yes. Yeah. It, there's a, a lot of working with the school, and also it, it's quite easy just to turn up and have a go at stuff. Everyone's very welcoming. Okay. So apart from like Math Soc and, and Computer Science Society, what, what other societies did you get involved in when you first came? Um, well, I actually got involved a lot in music because um, I myself am a classical singer. I got involved in the, um, the University Women's Choir um, and the University Voices. So I really enjoyed that. I would really recommend if you have a background in music to get involved. There's so many groups and um, teams available, so you can, it, pretty much any instrument, you can go for it and enjoy. Um, yeah, I also got involved in um, WISE, <laughs> Women in Science and Engineering. Um, I found it a really great way to kind of meet some friends, and um, also we do outreach, so it was opportunities to volunteer in the local community, which was just really beneficial. It helped me kind of improve my communication skills and my networking skills, and I feel like I've kind of got a team of people behind me really supporting me in my studies now, so that was definitely something that I got involved in. So you, you mentioned outreach there. What, what's outreach? So we actually have two outreach officers on our committee of WISE, which their sole responsibility is to reach out to schools in the local area and run events. So we often have students come to the university or we travel to them with all their travel expenses are paid by the society as well, which is excellent. And what that means is we can kind of run workshops in the local community. Um, we do little practicals, talk about science, and it's, it's a really nice way of kind of meeting new people, but also kind of inspiring the next generation of STEM students, being able to talk to them. That's fantastic. Thank you. And uh, Molly, question here about postgraduate students. We talk a lot about undergraduates and their opportunities. Um, are there similar things for postgraduates? Um, yes, certainly. I mean, all of this, well, I think basically every society is open to postgraduate students and they encourage you to get involved as well. Um, there are the careers network services that are still applicable for postgraduate students um, and the departmental societies as well. It's still great for the postgraduate students to get involved in. A lot of societies will have a postgraduate rep as well that will represent the, the, the views of the, the postgraduate students. So I know that uh, NUCSOC, the Nuclear Society, always used to have a postgraduate uh, role on the committee. And uh, students, postgraduate students, have tutors just the same as undergraduate students, is that right? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Um, so, some other questions that we've got here are, are much more practical questions. So, each of you, I'm going to ask, where is the best place to eat around campus? Would you like to start off? Yeah, I mean... I always really loved the pizzas on the Vale at the Melt. That was like the best. I used to go in first year with my friends and we'd all get a pizza and then we'd go back to the flat and watch movies. So definitely get a pizza from the Vale. Great. I think it depends how far you want to go. If you go into Sally Oak or Harborn, there are lots of places where there are slightly fewer students, but lots of more interesting food. Um, otherwise, the university center has quite a lot of good places. Okay, Molly? Um, or my favorite was always the, um, there was like a Tex-Mex burrito place in the university center. That was always a very popular choice. The queues can sometimes be quite long, so you've got to get in there quick, but then it's, it's excellent, well worth the wait. Excellent. If you want to go slightly outside of campus, Domino's has a really good lunchtime deal. Uh, if you've got like a gap between your lectures, it's always good to pop down there. But on campus, I'd say Joe's is quite nice as well. Pretty cheap. Brilliant. So we've got some questions coming in asking about how do people find out about the events that are going on around campus? <coughs> so where would you suggest people look or sign up for information? Um, I would def definitely recommend um, the Fab and Fresh page on Facebook. That just has pretty much everything. Also, um, Instagram, I know Wise UAB, our page is like very active on Instagram. We post about all of our events on there. Um, also, just looking out for um, any announcements or boards from your school as well, because often we do advertise kind of in lectures or around buildings, we can have posters up, and definitely obviously the fairs as well. There will be an EPS Societies Fair on the 29th as well, um, where WISE will definitely be there, so please do come along, learn a bit more about the societies that are specific to your school as well, because that's where you're going to meet people that are just like you. Okay, any thoughts about where to find information? 
Oh. Just socials. <laughs> yeah, social media. Social media is a big thing. Follow, if you're interested in a society, even if you don't go to every event, follow them on social media so at least you can keep track of what's happening and go along to the things that you're interested in. Um, for your school, just check your emails. Like, it's, it, it's, it's a boring chore to do, but you have to check your student emails and you will get exciting opportunities advertised to you. So, yeah, just stay up to date. Okay. And lots of pizza events in, uh, in computer science. At Always. Least. Always. <laughs> Yep, it's quite, it seems to be the thing in thing with it. Whichever school you're in, it's it's always pizza. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so there are many questions here about people thinking about how to get to know people on their course. How how would you um, think about the different areas of life and where you met people? So is is meeting people on your course uh, essentially? The best place or, or are there other places in your life that you met a lot of the important people? I think th through the Computer Science Society is where I've met lots and lots of people um, and just sitting next to people in lectures and going, are you getting this? Uh, that, that's, that's a good way of meeting people. But also people from other schools, other departments. If you go to sports clubs, for example, that's a good place to meet people who have completely different interests but something shared. Yeah, I think things? getting involved with like other societies in the EPS community as well. There are over 40 societies that are within this bubble, the EPS community, and they're all fantastic. And through that community, you can meet loads of people on your course and on other similar courses, because um, I'm sure you'll find that you actually have a lot in common with like, between a chemical engineer and an engineer. You will have shared knowledge, and it's, it's nice to be able to meet people that are within your sphere, but slightly on, on the peripheral. And what about the role of accommodation and where you live, particularly in, in first year? I mean, I, I would say to that, in an ideal world, obviously, it's lovely to move into a flat and like really get on with your flatmates, and that's a really great way to meet people just through them. But if that doesn't happen, like I would say really don't worry, because not everyone is going to get on with their first year flat, and there are so many different ways to meet people. Just don't be afraid to kind of say yes to things. Like, I know in my first week, um, someone put on like a massive group chat about walking to a lecture together, and if people wanted to meet up. And I'm being so nervous in my room, but I was like, why not? And I just went for it. And I actually made so many friends just from that one walk to campus. So yeah, don't be afraid to say yes to things and just put yourself out there a little bit and you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, that's good. So I've got, I've got some questions here. People are thinking about how do they get to meet staff in the department. So, how do you, how do they meet and interact? And what's what's a personal tutor for? So, what what do you, what's your thoughts about that? How did you meet people in the, in the department? So, what events with free pizza is this? Is, is my good example is because staff it's like your pizza answer for everything, well. isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. It's the society's answer to everything. But but also, at least in computer science, we're all in one building and the staff are all just upstairs. So if you just wander around, everyone's sort of available, everyone's friendly. If you're not quite sure on a module, they'll have office hours. So you can just chat to them and say, look, I don't really get this maths, could you help? And they'll sit down and talk you through it. Everyone's really friendly. Okay, and how did you meet some of the staff in maths? Um, just the mathematical musing events. We've also had like module choice um, afternoons where the lecturers are all there, happy to chat to you, and same for maths, so they're all in the same building. If you want to find a lecturer, they're easy to find. Mm -hmm. Molly, you, you went between Met and Matt and physics at times, I think. Yes, yeah, so um, lots of staff to get to know. Um, it's something you build up throughout your time at university. Um, the lecturers that you have, you'll get to know them better, and the more you get to know them, the more comfortable you become asking questions and using their office hours, because it is a really, it, like, just take advantage of it. Take advantage of the fact that you can ask them questions. You can go and have chats with them um, about their subject area. Um, and Andrew, you mentioned personal tutors as well. Um, you know, you will all have a personal tutor, and that is one member of staff that you are able to talk to about um, things that you're finding difficult on the course, um, careers options, um, and just kind of like a general how to make the most of university. They're a fantastic resource, so just make sure that you're making the most of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving on, there are some questions about the city of Birmingham and uh, how, how do you 
rate going into the city? How do you get into the city? What, what's the life like around uh, the, if you get off campus? Um, I'd say it's so easy to go like into the city centre. I always take the train because obviously the uni station is literally like five minute walk. It's the, the uni station is literally like five minute walk. It's so easy to get there. Um, and the train ticket's super cheap. I'd recommend getting a rail card like, um, as well because that can really save you some money over the year. But yeah, definitely getting out into the centre and just exploring. Don't be afraid to just kind of go out, try somewhere different. Um, yeah, I can't even recommend anything else. Just, just go for it and have, a, have an explore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Broad Street is an experience. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Birmingham myself, so I didn't want to leave. It's, it's that good of a city. Um, I'd say the transport's really good as well. Um, if you have your student ID and a pound coin, you can get to the city centre on the bus. And the bus runs at like 2, 3, 4 a.m. So if you had an hour at Broad Street, you can get a one pound bus back instead of 20 pound Uber. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. No, the, the city's fantastic. I love it so much. I live like very central now. Um, and if um, Broad Street isn't your thing, there are loads of other options in the city. There are fantastic restaurants and bars and um, things to get involved in mini golf ball. There's, there, there's everything in the city. Um, and it's got fantastic transport links, as everyone has already said. Fantastic. Any thoughts? Go to Digbeth, it's my recommendation. There are lots Digbeth. of interesting places around there. Um, but also around the Jewelry Quarter and Gas Street Basin. There are lots of different places around the city. Custard is very important. Mm, the custard factory, that's good. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so we've also got some questions about uh, following on from the idea of, of university is just the start of a career. So um, do any of you have any experience with, with how to develop your career prospects, your, your employability, and the kinds of services that go on? Yeah, yeah I mean, the Computer Science Society, we do quite a lot of stuff. With, with sponsors and with people coming in, I think um, and we're, we're trying to run events like with, with staff, so looking over people's CVs and getting some practice doing actual interviews, which I think is some of the core skills. But again, uh, whether it's staff or PhD students or just other students around, there are lots of people who've got connections, who've got experience, so reach out and people can help. Yeah, I'd definitely recommend talking to people in other years as well. I know like as a first year it can feel quite difficult to kind of break out of that first year bubble, but if you join these societies, like you're gonna meet so many different people and everyone has different experiences and has spoken to different people and I find that I I really built my own kind of idea about my career just from kind of talking to people and finding out what they've done and what they were interested in. Um, also kind of looking out for maybe summer internships, um, just keeping an eye out for kind of grad grad schemes, companies you're interested in, and kind of trying to find your own interests. That's probably the best thing I would say. But yeah, definitely many societies are very supportive of careers. Um, I know that like WISE, Computer Science, we all um, advertise different opportunities available out there. So definitely like keep an eye on it, but try to develop your own interests is what I'd say. And I believe that MathSoc uh, helped to organize a careers fair um, yeah, employers. we've had a careers fair last year. Our vice president had organised it. Um, we work closely with a lot of companies. I know we, we, we work really closely with Teach First. They're always letting us know if there's internships, postgrad opportunities, and stuff like that. That's great. Molly? Um, absolutely agree with everything that everyone's already said. Just get involved, attend careers fairs, talk to people, network. It's all really important. Get involved with societies. Um, but also don't be afraid if you don't know what you want to do. It can take quite a while. I didn't know what I wanted to do until last year, um, and that's, that's okay. Use the services that are available to you. Don't just think that Careers Network is for people that know where they want to go into. You can talk to Careers Network, even if you did, well, especially if you don't know where you want to go to, and they'll help advise you and take you along the right steps so you can build skills that will then help you when you know where you want to go. That's fantastic, thank you. And I think lots of people forget that the Careers Network is actually open to people for two years after they graduate as well. Um, so people, you know, not just when you graduate, you're still part of the university communi community afterwards as well. Um, so we're coming to the end of our time. Uh, so one of the most popular questions on my list is, do you have one piece of advice for us that we might not otherwise have heard? So this is a twist on the, 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 the question here. Any have advice? Fun. Just have fun. Have fun. Oh, you would have heard that already, but that's the, the main thing. Just have fun, 
and um, do what makes you happy. Yeah. Okay, any advice? I mean, I'd love to echo that as well, but I would also say don't underestimate the value of like a really nice dinner. If you do treat yourself sometimes, because just when I was missing home, like a really nice dinner, just to remind me of home, can really like pick you up sometimes after a tricky day. So yeah, don't underestimate the power of cooking. That's fantastic. Pizza, of course. Is... Yeah, well, yeah, that was going to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Never underestimate the value of pizza. Okay. Um, I'd cool. say it's a very stressful time. Uh, it's really, it's a jump. It's really hard, but just don't put too much pressure on yourself. Okay. Thank you very much indeed to all of you. And uh, Stephen, over to thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. Thank you, Callista. Thank you, Catherine, Jacob, Molly. Look, I think we're going to be at the back of the hall. Uh, as we finish. So if you've got other questions or questions that you posted that we haven't had a chance to answer, then do catch us uh, at the back. But, uh, and look, thank you to Celia, thank you to Deborah, thank you to you all for coming to the hall. If you're online, thank you for joining us for this, uh, this introductory session as well. Look, I hope it's been useful. I hope there's been some practical advice there, a little bit of information about what the college is, a little bit of information about how the university will uh, support you as you get settled in your first few weeks here at Birmingham. But thank you very much for coming, everyone. You are very welcome. And of course, we look forward to hanging out together for the next, uh, next few weeks over this term. And of course, if there's anything we can do do catch one of us as we walk across the green heart. Catch one of your fellow students, and someone's bound to know the answer for the questions that you have. But thank you very much for coming, everyone. It's good to see you all. <laughs>